signature win, as I mentioned before, because they've had some wins in the Big Ten, Chris, but they haven't been able to capitalize and use those as momentum. They have two outstanding face-off men as Nick Rowlett wins the opening draw. It's Rowlett and Wheatfeld. We'll see both of them for Michigan, so that's going to be huge for them to get possessions and keep the ball away from this Maryland team, and they gain possession on the opening face-off but lose it in the middle of the field. Here's Makar. Your goaltender in Big Ten play to be checking in at 50%. If, if you want to get deeper into the Big Ten tournament, you want to go to your first NCAA tournament appearance. Left-handed shot, first goal of the game, Daniel Kelly, his 17th. You know, we talk about spot feeds and shooters. Daniel Kelly is a spot shooter. Similar spot to where he won it for the Terps a couple of weeks ago down at Charlottesville. The overtime victory, Maryland proved. And you have another face-off guy in Rowlett. That, that just takes away that rhythm aspect. Connery said he'll go three and three. Extra pass, goal for Michigan. Bame on the receiving end of the plus one, and Michigan ties it up at one apiece. He's so two-handed. He's so opportunistic. And this is a great play. And Josh Sawada, it just shows you how versatile these attackers are. All of them can pass. All of them can score. And you have three guys that are interchangeable. On this midfield line, the Mays line, the second line they call the blue line. Both get about equal time. Mulholland knocked off his feet. Gets it over to Cohen. Cohen shoots. Rupel right there to make the save. First time we've mentioned Brian Rupel's name in Maryland lore for that. I want to welcome you to SECU Stadium in College Park. Those of you watching Rutgers Hopkins, the women's game. Chris Cotter, Paul Carcaterra with you. We are 1 1 here in the early going between Michigan and Maryland. Maryland scoring first. It's Daniel Kelly who got the goal. Michigan counter with Mikey Bame, and Maryland just takes the lead again. The freshman from Marietta, Georgia, Raiden Erksa, puts the Terps up by a goal. I know someone who's smiling right now mentioning Marietta, Georgia. That's Chris Cotter, who shares the same hometown as Great Nerxa. A dynamic freshman, and look who's making the pass. I featured Kyle Long in the beginning of this broadcast. That opened up the door, and Nerxa just describes him as a big lump of clay that he can mold, and he enjoys having that opportunity every single week. Mark stays with the left. Got it over to Justin Brown. It would be nice for Michigan fans if number one and Mays and Blue could get a goal today. Shot, score! That's a nice muscle dodge by Isaac Aronson. Posting up the short stick and fighting through the pressure of Dante Trader, who plays defensive back for the Maryland Terps. He knows the physicality game and the leverage game. But Aronson that time just dips the shoulder right there. That's where Trader kind of loses his balance. And when he loses his balance, it actually frees up his hands. And Michigan. Now it's Wheatfeld waiting for Michigan. Will he take a shot? He does. And Michigan's got a little juice now in the early going on the road, Cart. Two face-off specialists with over a hundred draws on the season. Weirman is seeing different techniques, different strategies. Wheatfeld just this time takes it right down the heart of the Maryland defense. And Maryland made a decision there, Chris. They are way more concerned. Here's Murph. Michigan shows, skip pass, the far side. Kelly will shoot. Carr goes down to make the save. Jordy, still 20 seconds to shoot for the Terps. Good move, outside of the cage though. Long wasn't able to finish. Yeah, you saw the quickness of Kyle Long. You know what he should have done right there? Gone behind the back. They've done a much better job in this game than they did last weekend against Hopkins and special teams in general. Not just facing off, but the clearing game as Rupel goes up and makes the save. 
I like the way Maryland's playing the pick. There's that speed from Erksa. Maltz right in the stick of Shane Carr. Some it's of these shots, shots are making the it easy, right? Yeah. Beam, head up, inside, and a lot of traffic, and it scores! It goes in! Trickles past Rupel. I think Bryce Clay is gonna get credit for the goal. It looked like he lost it initially, but Rupel wasn't able to pick it up as it was bouncing around in the crease. They love Bryce Clay in Ann Arbor. He's battled injury. He's a leader on and off the field. And when you're on the road against defending national champs, you take any goal you can. And the Wolverines start getting some belief that they can they believe that because they've seen it in the past, right? He had five goals against Penn State last year. Five goals. So the potential is there. Unbelievable athlete as well. Beautiful passing. Bain finishes it off. And Michigan's firing on all cylinders on both ends of the field here, Clark. This is why I love Mikey Bain's game so much. He has two crease-type goals. You will see him behind the cage as a feeder. You will see him dodging with both hands. He's a complete chameleon. And this time, for the second time, he catches Maryland ball watching. Very rarely do you see Ajax Zapatello not in the right spot at the right time, 36. And that's trusting your instincts and doing something over and over again. Shot inside and another goal from Michigan. Josh Zawada scores, and the Wolverines are making it look easy, Kark. And I'm seeing a trend. Chris Cotter, you're seeing a lot of goals being jammed in the inside, right? The assisted goals, that sliver of a space for your highly skilled and crafty attackman like Josh Zawada to catch. 10 seconds to shoot. Long's gonna have to make something happen. Gets to the middle of the field. Pass inside, the bounce shot. Carr wasn't fooled by it. Erksa wasn't able to beat him. What a pass, it's over when you're not going to the tournament. They can build off a win like this, Chris. Thompson, inside, tough angle. Rupel can't find it initially, and it's laying on it. Dangerously. I'm lefty. Up the right hash, knowing that he's not as comfortable working with his offhand there. That's good defense by Michigan. Brennan, defense was slow to rotate over on the far side of the cage, and he makes a pick. Talk about a needed goal for a team and a player. Jack Brennan, the senior, was shooting 16% heading into today's contest. John Tillman spent time with him this week. They videoed. His release. Weirman stays on to set a pick. Maltz. Tough angle shot. And the senior from Ashburn, Virginia, buries it two straight for Maryland on two straight possessions. Here it comes. The Terps are coming. And that is a beautiful pick. And Danny Maltz. I'll tell you, is, is one of the better. Working on Burleys. Brown over to Bryce Clay, the former attackman. That's Zawada, gets in front of the cage, backhanded shot, Ooh. scores! <laughs> hey now. Skill wise, you're hard pressed to find a guy. That's got all the tools like Josh Sawada. He's tall, he's lanky, he's fast, and he's electric. That backhand right there, no goalie has any clue in terms of the trajectory of that shot. And with... Cohen shoots. Rupa got a piece of it, now he comes out running. Zapp will shoot. He gets stoned by Carr. And then the blues ball in front. Zap's going to get the goal. End to end, Cotter. This is a play that starts with an incredible stop and in awareness of a freshman goalie in Brian Rupel, who makes the save and then chases the rock. And Ajax Zapatello. It's the save by Rupel.
Balls loose, the awareness to go get it. And he finds his shutdown defender in the junior All-American, Ajax Zapatello, who's unlucky but follows his shot. And the I make the saves. Like, he's thinking next level there. Right. He, he reminds me of a, of a friend of ours, a certain Quint Kesnick, who used to, a little guy, you know, 170 pounds in college, uh, running around like... Barking out orders nonstop. <laughs> running around Sla like... Slashing attackmen. <laughs> Chirping. <laughs> yep. Beautiful. Just a thing of beauty. Maryland scores. Clawing their way back into it. Now again a one goal deficit. There's the shifty Kyle Long. But to me, this is probably the, the softest goal Shane Carr's let up this afternoon. Long just uses the pick and the speed. So if you couple those two, speed, quickness. In a pick, you're going to get your hands free because he's lightning in a bottle, but he doesn't get a ton of speed on this shot, almost like a knuckleball. You see, Rutgers Hopkins game is just so big for a potential at large. If this is a three bid league, you're going to have to win these types of games if you're Rutgers. And, and coming into this game, after you lose at Ohio State. Doesn't have the angle behind the cage to Bain. Pass up top. Shot score from Michigan, Jacob Jackson's 10th of the year. Jacob Jackson does a tremendous job in terms of splitting at the last second. He catches the feed with his right hand and immediately the defensive pressure is Almost 13 minutes scoreless for Michigan and gets his second half started the way the Wolverines had hoped. Thompson scores on the run. Got something here, Connor. And you said it best. This is a team that's been on runs in the past, but could they close the deal on the road against the defending national champs? And Peter Thompson's a local boy. Coach Connery explained to us they kind of stumbled upon him in the recruiting process. And boy, oh boy, are they glad they did. Coming into today, shooting 43%, and that's all the reps. That's all the practice, the extra hours, honing in your shot to make it rain in spots like that. Jackson feeling it! <laughs> Cotter, I mentioned in the beginning of the third quarter, what kind of adjustments would Michigan make? They were successful beating the Terps inside, right in the paint in that first quarter. Now these last three goals by midfielders on the parade. You just talked about it, Clark. How do both of these teams handle this situation that they're not, they don't find themselves in very often? Erksa scores on the question mark and answers. I love this background music. I get so jazzed when a goal is scored, regardless of stadium, and you hear this beat. Braden Erksa is dancing with a flawless unguardable question mark here because he steps away from the pressure injury in the first half good to see double nickels and white back on the field tough angle scores jack course just busted his crease. way and they waved it off in the crease it's gonna say Jen. trying to roll back goal line extended pass inside couldn't finish it though thompson got it in his cross and he stepped in the crease trying to but right now, Michigan has the three-goal advantage. And Ryan, Co Ryan Cohen inside. Rupel makes the save. Are you kidding That's me? That's still a Th bruise. Think about that. If, if those are, yeah, but if they're baggy sweats and they're, they're drooping a little bit, you're going to get that extra save here and there. No, oh, extra save. Yeah, I'm talking about in terms of protection from the bruise. Like, oh, anything's better that than 100 mile an hour shot. You're getting, oh. nope. Oh, the ricochet off the pipe. 
And then the rebound goes to Babe, and he shows his skill to put it past Rupel. Got to find a way on the road to be lucky. And if you're going to close out, the program has been close in the past, but never have closed the door on a team like Maryland. The defending national champs are on the ropes. Mikey Babe, not the most glorious of goals he will have in his career. Nonetheless, Maryland's on skates a little bit here. But they got Thompson in trouble. Good double by Burles, 40 in white. Nowhere to go for Zawada. Check that Bame. Doesn't get a push in the back like he wanted. But Maryland has three cover guys with Burles as well. They had Matt Rahill there last year, and Burles, young man, filling that role. Speaking of young men, Brayden Nurksa. He is coming into his own as the season progresses. The freshman picks up goal number three on the day. Absolutely love his game. He's fearless. He's got speed. You saw his prior dodge was up to the left side of goal line extended. This time he goes the opposite side, righty. Doesn't feel the pressure from Jack Whit. Everybody from Yorktown is a legend. The bus driver, the deli owner, the mayor from 1967. Flag on the play. Look at Hunter going down to get the shot. Another save for Hunter Taylor. Let's check the call. Blue 19 slash one minute. Reset to 60, please. Kyle Long 23 is the, the vision guy. Maltz scores. He failed to mention 37 card. He's the Johnny dangerously. No respect, right? You see right here, the ball spins and he's just wide open. And the reason he's wide open is because everyone is concerned with those other players. Owen Murphy. Braden Irksa, you have guys. Owen will look to dodge. Gets a good look outside of the cage. Oh, I thought he could have taken another step or two, right? There wasn't that pressure he had. Maryland looking to close that gap even further. Maltz just scored moments ago, man up. Irksa, little confusion for Michigan. Boy, tell you what, Hunter Taylor got a little bit of it. Didn't know where it was behind him. Doesn't go. Going to be heavy dose in this fourth quarter. Tried to squeeze it into Zawada. In front, left handed crank and a score from Jackson. Jacob Jackson is coming to the party in this second half. You saw in the third quarter with a beautiful split right to left. This time he Sees that seam. Cone gets the ball behind, instantly eyes up. And that's what you have with a versatile attack. A group with all double digit assists in right now. Having the best half of his season. Rowlett now battling with Weirman. Nice play by Rowlett to goose it to his teammate. Michigan with possession. The goal was scored by number 15. Zawada tries to quickly get it to Bain, who scores! And a flag on the play. The Chameleons are back at it again. Cone can feed. Zawada can score. Well, Zawada can pass as well. And Bain can hit the back of the net. All of these attackers for Michigan are perimeter guys who could pass, score, dodge. You put them in any place. The out because that was the single worst thing they did in that loss against Johns Hopkins. And he completely turned it around and cleaned it up. Zawada with the feed to Mulholland. 
who somehow was able to get enough on it to beat Rupel. This is telling. When the ball's in the stick of Josh Zawada, when your head coach loves your game, but he wants you to be a little more assertive, take command of this offense, be the man. Well, Nine in Blue has been distributing like the man. And the defense joining the Big Ten with the rest of the Big Ten Conference in 2015 when it became a lacrosse conference as well. Michigan is 5 and 35. Maryland is 35 and 5. So a, a complete flip of the script. But this is, is a massive moment for the Wolverines. This is a moment that they've waited for for decades when John Paul brought this program from club to varsity and did an incredible job making it a reality. This is what the fans envisioned. And a pole goal. As if the team wasn't fired up enough. Jimmy Pisani, the freshman. He's a dude, Cotter. Six foot four. Played at Culver, one of the best high school programs in the country. A lacrosse factory in the guts to go full field with the pole. And I talk about chameleons, haven't said it enough. The four goals on the ropes. You know, all those years we've watched Michigan so close, it, it's, it's those bounces that don't go their way, right? They don't, they don't close it out by being clean in some critical areas. Today, it's, it's been the opposite. They have answered. Nothing you can do about that shot. Spanos got himself free. Hunter Taylor was at the mercy of the sophomore from Pottsdown, PA, Malvern Fred. Yeah, Spanos is going to get the short stick, and that is a beautiful job of face dodging but not losing your angle. Right? Like he doesn't go east west. Long. Back to his left, just nowhere to go with it. Schreiber all over him. Now he hits a cutter, shoots wide. And Michigan gets possession. There's no backup. There was no attacker behind for Maryland. And the uncharacteristic type of mistakes by the Terps, which plagued Michigan in the past, is plaguing them today. And on the 10-man ride with the open goal, it's Cohen who fires it into the empty net. Or was it Zawada? I think it might have been Zawada. At any rate, that may just close the door on the Terrapins. It's Zawada, of course. You said he could do everything. He can. And talk about when the ball bounces your way. But I love the move by Kevin Connery and staff. You know that M Michigan is getting 10-manned by Merrill. Final minute of play here from College Park. You know, Cotter, you could also say, you know, oh, Maryland lost so many players from a year ago as they keep on chipping away. Caden Onagi with the goal there. There's no quit in the Terps. Well, two-handed cradle, play the muscle game. That fake BTB shovel pass from behind. Watch it right here. Right here, he fakes this backhand pass, and he gets the defense thinking. That's a little Connor Fields action. Connor Fields mastered that. Ten. The final seconds count down, and it's the biggest win in Michigan lacrosse history. The Wolverines finally break through and get that signature win they've been craving. And for Coach Conry, all the hard work through the first six years in Ann Arbor, paying off with this win. Now, Kark, celebrate it, enjoy it, and build upon it in one of the toughest conferences in America. He's fired up. You're knocking on the door for years. It's not opening. Today, you kicked it down. For Paul Carcaterra and our entire crew, I'm Chris Cotter. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let's send you to Homewood.